Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Sharmini Pires coming to you from Baltimore. In an effort to release some pressure on the struggling European economies, Mario Draghi, president of the European Central Bank, announced a trillion euro quantitative easing package on Monday. Quantitative easing is an unconventional form of monetary policy where a central bank creates new money electronically to buy financial assets like government bonds. And this process aims to directly increase private sector spending in the economy and return inflation to target. Well, what does that mean and what might be wrong with it is our next topic with Michael Hudson. Michael Hudson is a distinguished research professor of economics at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. His two newest books are The Bubble and Beyond and Finance Capitalism and Its Discontents. His upcoming book is titled Killing the Host, How Financial Parasites and Debt Bondage Destroy the Global Economy. Michael, thank you for joining us as always. It's good to be here. Michael, the Fed and some economists will argue that this is what got the U.S. out of its 2008 financial crisis. In fact, they put several QE measures into place. So what's wrong with quantitative easing? Well, its uh, cover story is it's supposed to help employment and uh, the pretense is an old model that used to be taught in textbooks uh, 100 years ago. The pretense is that banks uh, lend money to companies to invest and build uh, equipment and hire people. But that's not what banks do. Banks lend money uh, to real estate. Uh, uh, they lend money to corporate raiders. They lend money to buy assets. Uh, they don't lend money for companies to uh, invest in equipment and hire. Just the opposite. Uh, they do lend money to corporate raiders. And when they take over companies, they outsource uh, labor, they downsize labor, and they try to squeeze out more from the labor force, and they try to grab the pensions. So uh, the Fed was pretty open in uh, what quantitative easing is supposed to do since uh, 2008. It's supposed, to in it's supposed to lower the interest rates, which raises bond prices, and it inflates the stock market. And since 2008, we've had the largest monetary inflation in history, uh, $4 trillion of quantitative easing by the Fed, but it's all gone into the stock market and the bond market. So what has this done? Well, it's helped uh, stock and bondholders get richer. And uh, who are the stock and bondholders? They're the 1% and they're the 10%. Uh, and uh, people are uh, wringing their hands and saying, why isn't the economy getting richer? Why is it since 2008, economic inequality and the distribution of wealth have worsened instead of gotten closer together. Well, it's because of quantitative easing. It's because quantitative easing have, has uh, increased uh, the value of the stocks and the bonds that the 1% or the 10% hold. Uh, and it hasn't uh, helped the economy at all because uh, the Fed is really concerned with its con constituency, uh, which are the banks. Uh, one of the problems is that quantitative easing hasn't even helped uh, one class of investors in particular, pension funds. Uh, and uh, this is, it's done just the opposite. Uh, pension funds have made the assumption a few years ago that in order to break even with the rate of contributions that uh, corporations and states and municipalities are paying, they have to make 8.5%, 8% uh, a year rate of return. But quantitative easing lowers the interest rate. Now, lowering the interest rate has made these pension funds pretty desperate. Uh, the risk-free rate of return is less than 1% on uh, government short-term uh, treasury bills. Uh, if you buy longer-term treasuries, you can make 2%, but then if the interest rates ever go up, you're going to take a loss on investments. So pension funds have got, said, we're desperate. What are we going to do? They've turned the money over to Wall Street money managers and to hedge funds. The hedge funds take a huge rake off of fees uh, to begin with. But even worse, the hedge funds and the big banks, Goldman Sachs, Citibanks, when they see a pension fund manager coming through the door, he, they think, how can I take what's in his pocket and put it in my pocket? So they rip them off, and this is why there are so many big lawsuits against uh, uh, Wall Street for mismanaging pension fund money. 
So uh, the effect of the quantitative easing has been to make pension funds desperate, and it's been, it's been to support real estate prices on the idea that somehow this is helping, that high costs of housing help recovery. Well, they don't help recovery because to the extent that uh, there's been quantitative easing, they uh, mean that new homeowners have to pay even more of their income to the banks as mortgage interest, and that means they have even less money to pay for goods and services, so the actual markets uh, continue uh, to shrink. And uh, what the quantitative easing has not been used for is really what uh, uh, it was promised in 2008. Uh, before uh, President Obama won, uh, won the election and took office, Congress said that the TARP bailout and the TELF was supposed to go for debt reduction, that you didn't create money, but it was to write down the mortgages so that people could afford to stay in their home rather than the, uh, uh, the millions of homeowners that have been foreclosed on and thrown out. But uh, when Mr. Obama, even before Obama came into office, uh, when the uh, Democrats in Congress and the Republicans, uh, Paulson, the Secretary of the Treasury, said, yes, we're willing to write down debts, Obama said, no, he's not going to do that. And uh, he ended up supporting other uh, banks. So none of this money has been used for debt write down. Well, exactly the same phenomenon is happening in Europe. So, Michael, this is exactly what the ECB is now proposing for Europe. So let's take up the particularity of Europe in our next segment. Thank you so much for joining us. That's really good to be here. Thank you so much, Shemi. And thank you for joining us on The Real News Network.